Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Study. This is Element 4, Sub-Element 5, Charlie, and we're talking about polar coordinates today. Hopefully the drawings that I've done, I've worked out the math for you to show you how to find it, and I hope it demystifies some of this just a little bit. So the first question is asking which of the following represents pure capacitive reactance of 100 ohms in rectangular notation? So that zero is the resistive portion. So there's no resistance. So it's purely 100 ohms of capacitive. Now there is a rule. So we're going to transition over here really quick. In rectangular notation, when X is an inductive reactance, so the reactance is a positive value. So if it was inductive, it would be positive. Capacitive is going to be negative. So it would be resistance minus that capacitive reactance. So that is the answer, 0 minus J100. Now, looking at question number two, how are impedances described in polar coordinates? They are by magnitude and phase angle. Magnitude and phase angle. I do not have a drawing of the phase angles on these, but you'll see, uh, if you want to Google it, you can go see some polar forms such as what I had to look up here to figure out how to do it. Okay, question number three. Which of the following represents a pure inductive reactance in polar coordinates? Well, remember, inductive is positive. So if we go to drawing number three again, you can see that inductive is positive, and it's a 90-degree angle. So it's straight up. I did not draw the angles on any of these, but if you wanted to, you start here at your origin and you just draw your angle to your point. And, that, and then, of course, you could figure out the angle if you wanted to. And that angle would show you does current lead and how much does it lead by or does voltage lead and how much does it lead by. You probably will never, ever use this um, unless you're some kind of super engineer in the ham radio world. So don't worry about it too much. Just let's learn how, how these work. Okay, what type of y-axis scale is most often used for graphs of circuit frequency response? Frequency can take up a lot of space. If you went from 0 to 21, 21 megahertz, that, that's going to take up a whole bunch of space. So we use the logarithmic scale, which will reduce it down and make it easier to read. So just remember that when it comes to frequency response, a logarithmic scale is going to make it look a whole lot better. Question number five, what, what kind of diagram is used to show the phase relationship between impedances at a given frequency? That is a phasor diagram. And here is number six, it's a phasor diagram. And if you were to start at the origin, you could draw your line to that point at negative 25 ohms capacitive reactance and 50 ohms resistance and that would give you an angle right there now that is not drawn to scale so don't crucify me i did not draw it to scale so you we are using phasor diagrams that's where these polar coordinates are going okay so what does the impedance of 50 minus j25 ohms represent this is question number six, so I'm going to bring that back for just a minute. You don't have to graph this one, but you do need to remember that if the inductive reactance, if it is inductive reactance, it would be a positive value. But notice this is minus J25, so that's a negative value. So that's going to be capacitive reactance. So 50 ohms resistance in series 
with 25 ohms capacitive reactance. That's because it is negative value. So I hope now you're starting to understand that if you can keep this graph in your head where resistance is along the x-axis, inductive, inductive is up, and capacitive is down. So I hope that can help you remember that. Now let's go to the next question. Number seven says, where is the impedance of a pure resistance plotted on rectangular coordinates? So the rectangular coordinates for number seven looks like this. You can see it's going, wee, there it goes. Resistance goes to the right. That is your horizontal axis, the x-axis. All right, so we're going back to number eight now. And question number eight says, what coordinate system is often used to display the phase angle of a circuit containing resistance, inductive, and or capacitive reactants? And those are polar coordinates, polar coordinates. Question number nine, when using rectangular coordinates to graph the impedance of a circuit, what do the axes represent? The x-axis is the resistive component, we got that right, and the y-axis represents the reactive component. And just to show you again, reactance is the y-axis, resistance is the x-axis. Now we're headed to question number 10. This is where your math comes in. So I think I've got this all taken care of here with some drawings with the math already done. So the question is asking you which point on figure E5-1 best represents the impedance of a series circuit consisting of a 400 ohm resistor Notice I underlined 400 ohm resistor in red, I believe, and a 38 picofarad capacitor at 14 megahertz. So it's a two-part problem. The first thing, you can plot your 400 ohms on the graph, and that is, if you look, I drew 400 ohms, and there are three points that pass through 400 ohms, and that's point two. 0.6 and 0.4. So see, so you've already narrowed down your answers to three possible answers. Now you have to find out what is the capacitive reactance of this 38 picofarad capacitor at 14 megahertz. So the formula is 1 over 2 pi times the frequency in megahertz times the capacitance in farads. Now, to keep the number short, I just put 14 megahertz and 38 picofarads. That's 14 times 10 to the 6, or 14 million, and that's 38 picofarads, which is 38 times 10 to the negative 12. So, point, uh, I'm not going to do it to you. <laughs> Multiply that out on your calculator. You wind up with point zero 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 five three two. Multiply that times 2 pi. And then take the reciprocal, which uh, it's one divided by that, and you get a wrap around 300 ohms. It's 299 ohms. That's close enough. You can see where I drew the line across in black to 0.4, because remember, this is capacitive reactance, so it's got to be negative, and that is where 0.4 comes in, and that is the answer. And then on my little graph over to the right, you can see not drawn to scale, but that shows you where that point four is. And I circled why it's that answer in that yellowish green color. Now don't crucify me. I'm fully colorblind. So I just pick colors and sometimes I know what they are and sometimes I don't. <laughs> but that should have no bearing on what we're doing here. Alrighty, let's go to number 11. I'm going to read it first, then I'll put the answer solution on the screen. Which point in figure E5-1 best represents the impedance of a series circuit consisting of a 300 ohm resistor 
So 300 ohms is going to give us 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and 0 0.1. So you've already, you can't pick C on this one. So we know it's going to be through those points, but we need to find the, hmm, it's not capacitive, the inducted, the inductive reactance of this 18 microhenry inductor at 3.505 megahertz transitioning into that now the inductive reactance is the inverse of capacitive reactance inductive reactance is 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance so it's a little bit easier one less step so I put 3.505 megahertz on your calculator you can do 3.505 e 6 or times 10 to the 6 power or you could type in 3,505,000 times 18 microhenries now a micro is 10 to the negative 6 so on on my calculator I did 18 e negative 6 when you multiply those two together you get 63.09 multiply that times 2 pi 6.28 and you get about 400 ohms 396 so you can see now I circled it X is inductive reactance so the reactance is a positive value and that brings you to point three is the answer and on my graph on the right that is not drawn to scale by any means you can see that when I go to the positive that puts it up there in that positive area so that is the answer to number 11 and now you have one left one left but if you know how to figure these out I mean if you want to memorize the answers memorize the answers if 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 that's your jam that's your jam honestly I've never used these ever again since I took my extra I used them in college for a little bit not my jam I was more of a programmer which point on figure E5-1 best represents the, and see it says best represents, so we're getting an answer that's pretty doggone close. The impedance of a series circuit consisting of a 300 ohm resistor. Well, let's look. We're back to 300 ohms again. So that's 0 0.3, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. You can't pick C on this one either. <laughs> and a 19 picofarad capacitor at 21.2 megahertz. Now, 19 picofarad, so we're talking about capacitive reactance. What is capacitive reactance? It's negative. If you knew that already, you don't even have to figure this one out. There's only one on this point that is negative. That's point one. Let's pretend you forgot that. Is this the right one? This is number 12. This is not the right one. It's number 11. Let's go to number 12. So in rectangular notation, here we go. So we have four, uh, 300 ohms is already mapped out. We find out capacitive reactance by 2 pi times F times C, and then you take the reciprocal of that. That's why there's one divided by so 21 megahertz times so this is 21.2 times 10 to the 6th power or 21.2 e6 on your calculator and then 19 picofarads is 19 times 10 to the negative 12 or 19 e negative 12 when you multiply the megahertz times the capacitance you get 0 0.0004028 Multiply that by 2 pi gives you 1 divided by 0 0.00, that long number, gives you about 395 ohms. Let's look around the 400 ohm mark. So over here on the right, you can see that I have it drawn. It's down there right around 0.1. So 0.1a is the answer. We have made it to the end of section 5. 5 Charlie. Let's just make sure. Yep, so we're moving on to something else now. This has been probably one of the most math intensive. You can see how some of the earlier building blocks, learning capacitive reactants and inductive reactants, knowing those two formulas 
really helps us out. Now, if you needed the, the Pythagorean theorem, I think comes in at some point because we're going to have to figure out that angle and the length of that angle. And oh boy, this has just been a lot of fun, hasn't it? So a lot of my time has been spent working these out. Uh, there are other websites that have a team that does this. I'm one person who does this. So I'm rolling these out. Uh, I, this is number 22, if I'm not mistaken. So please like the video for the time that I put in to try to demystify some of this stuff. And give my channel a sub. That helps support me and my family for all the time that I've sat here at the kitchen table figuring this stuff out. So I'm Robbie, W1RCP. I'm just hoping that this helps you get your extra. That way you can go back to your club, be a VE, and be able to give back to the community. Um, I didn't see extra as a point of getting more band usage, although there is a little bit of extra band usage. But what extra did provide me is the fact that now I can be a VE and give tests for anyone. And that is why I became an extra. It wasn't about the bandwidth. Alrighty, so thank you so much. 73.